Hello everyone, how's it going? I hope that you're having a wonderful day and a very profitable time with Palantir in the market. Now, if you're searching about Palantir and have decided to click on my title and video, then chances are you have the same question that many of us are also asking ourselves. What's going on with Palantir? You know, is it going to recover to its former glories? And if you buy it now, is that going to be a good decision? So as we know, over the past few years, things have not always been easy. The job market has been looking ever more uncertain for many people in the world. And on the other hand, the inflation has been melting away people's savings in countries that used to be deflationaries for generations. So when every source of certainty is about to go, we must take this moment and to remember that we are the only person responsible for our own financial well-being. So we have to work towards that. And in order to secure this financial future, we got to find the growth opportunities of tomorrow and seize these ones that can multiply our capital exponentially, increasing the money available for investment later. Essentially, we need to find the golden goose. And for many people, Palantir is exactly some of that. So over the past few years, Palantir became so much more than just another tech stock collecting funding in exchange for promises. You know, that things are going to go great, that they're going to make, uh, they're going to get a lot more market shares and whatever. It has become a major company that plays the role of the cannery down the coal mine. It can tell you whether the risk appetite for capital is growing or shrinking. It has a, like, it, it also has enough clout and mystery around it to arouse the market's curiosity and people's tendency to follow trends. It is a company that people would very often view equally as, you know, the demand for risk equities in the market alongside other companies like Tesla or Apple or Microsoft. The fact that Palantir may rise and fall with the tidal waves of risk capital is a limited but very useful tool. It might explain why so many people have Palantir on their shortlist and why you should too. And in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into Palantir and see whether it deserves to have a place in your portfolio. Now, before the video continues, I just want to say thank you for coming to my channel and hope that your stay will be enjoyable and that you will get something new or some good takeaways from my content. If you like what you see, please consider to like, support, and to check out my channel page for the playlists of the companies that I cover. With that being said, I hope you're going to enjoy my analysis and let's get started on today's video. Now, over the past few days, Palantir has been experiencing some significant price movements uh, downward this time. As of the latest update, Palantir's price has seen like a high of $24.28 and a low of just above $23. These fluctuations do indicate a certain level of volatilities within the market. In the short term, analysts have identified like a ceiling of $25 uh, with a stock that has struggled to like to surpass really and a support level currently around $23, providing some stability in the price movements. Those levels are very important markers for like the, the people who want to trade the stock. For me, I think that like the short term trend of Palantir remains positive, like bullish, However, it's now moving sideways and waiting for some sort of additional catalyst to feed into the momentum. And in terms of the volume, the stock is seeing a trading volume ranging from like 30 to 45 million shares a day. And on the day that it dropped to $23, it peaked to around 70 million shares with a 30 day average volume of approximately 63 million shares. So this data does suggest that there is a decrease in trading activity, except for last Friday, uh, compared to the historical average. And to a very relative extent, it shows like a potential loss of interest from some of the market participants. Palantir is currently experiencing a period of weakening momentum, despite maintaining a bullish trend overall. So really like, the short term price movements do indicate a sideways patterns with a slight downward tendency 
caused by the decreased interest and the volume from investors. The stock faces the resistance at $25 and finds the support at around $23. In fact, even if it goes down to $20, it shouldn't really be surprising. And these levels may fluctuate as the market conditions continue to evolve. So, Palantir has been a stock with significant interest from people ever since its IPO, in fact, maybe before that as well. Upon its debut, like the sentiment was very bullish. And we have to say, even back then, like the ambience overall was different compared to what we have now. Investors were eager to capitalize on the company's innovative data analytics technologies. Now, of course, its journey afterwards has been characterized by a lot of periods of prolonged like sell-offs, um, often dipping below the $10 mark. One notable aspect of Palantir's price movement is its correlation to the news cycle. Or actually, the fact that it leads the news cycles talking about it. It's often observed that the news surrounding the company closely follow the actual price action, leading to self-fulfilling prophecy scenarios when, you know, in other words, if the if Palantir is trading at like $8, then you're going to hear a lot of negative news. When it's trading like close to 25, all of a sudden it's going to be one of the trillion uh, market cap companies again. That sort of things. And currently Palantir is in the midst of its bullish run, uh, albeit with like diminishing momentum with every day that passes. Uh, while the stock has shown a lot of resilience in like the previous sessions, definitely the pace of the ascent has not only slowed, but I would say has like almost stopped. So as such, there's a growing need for additional catalysts to not only sustain like the bullish momentum, but to try to push it to new highs. One factor that could influence Palantir's future performance is its status as a large cap stock. With the market cap steadily increasing, like Palantir is poised to eventually solidify its position amongst the market leaders. Large cap status often brings in increased institutional participation and a broader investor base, both of which is going to be very important for continued upside. So despite the current bullish outlook, it's essential to be very careful because of the short term. While the price targets in, are in the range of like 30 to 35 bucks, um, and they kind of seem plausible given Palantir's growth prospects and the market's positioning, they're by no means guaranteed. Like the market dynamics can change rapidly and unforeseen events or market shifts can derail the bullish thesis. Meanwhile, what the options are showing us is that the key strike prices range between 23 to 25 bucks for the puts and 25 to 26 for the calls. The distribution of demand shows like a favor towards the call, like more calls than the put, uh, which indicates a consensus amongst traders that Palantir's price trajectory will probably still go up um, in like the near term future. The options do serve a a pretty useful tool for investors because it can help us to generate additional revenue streams by selling the options. It can hedge against the price volatilities, especially if you already own a long position in Palantir. And also, it can increase the speculative exposure within a specific time frame without actually buying the underlying asset. So in the case of Palantir, options can be utilized to navigate the market uncertainties and to up and I would say to optimize to some some extent your returns. And given the current landscape, I would say that it's going to be smart to buy some call options and pull options, basically to use it as a straddle because we see that the stock is trading sideways at the moment. So if it goes either way, either direction. It's going to be significantly more like bullish or bearish. So either way, it's going to protect you at the least and hopefully to even make you some additional money um, by having this option, like by seeing its value going up. 
Now, I think it's useful to remind people that options can be very risky and a lot of money can just be gone um, or within like a very short period of time. So options can offer opportunities for enhanced returns and risk management for sure, but they can also derail your portfolio real quick if all the eggs are put into one, you know, time limited basket. Now, with all that being said, you know, we also have to admit that investing in the Palantir does present a lot of great opportunities and challenges for investors seeking exposure to the burgeoning tech industry, especially for data analytics and now AI. So up, like understanding the full picture of the upsides and downsides will help you to make the decision on whether you should be buying Palantir and more importantly, you know, if you want to buy when you should buy it and how much you should hold in your portfolio. One of the primary reasons why uh, investors are drawn to Palantir is its growth potentials. It is a leading player in its field and it operates in a field with immense promise to the future of a of the economy because businesses increasingly rely on data-driven insights to inform like decision making and drive innovations so places like Palantir they're very well positioned to capitalize on this increased demand with its expertise in handling and analyzing large caps and large volumes of data for those large caps and entities Palantir does stand to benefit from a growing demand for data-centric solutions across various industries. And another thing is that Palantir is financially stable. It's you know reassuring to see that Palantir, in just by its own operations, can stand on its own two feet, unlike many other tech startups that operate at a, at a loss. Um, Palantir has already established, you know, proven revenue streams that can allow Palantir to get the cash that it needs in order to operate. So it has demonstrated this ability to capitalize on, you know, this demand for reassurance. It also has demonstrated its ability to capitalize on popular trends um, to generate significant interest from the market, especially from the retails. Now, Palantir has effectively enhanced its visibility and appeal and attracted our attention basically by saying that they're going to go into the AI, right? So this is a big one, especially for 2024, where it it just seems to be like the year of AI, really, much like 2020 was seen as the year of EVs. So they're saying, you know what, we're also going to get into, like we're currently in data, we're going into AI as well. And that has really propelled um, its stock price to new heights because prior to that, yes, it increased from like eight dollars up to fifteen dollars, but afterwards it could not go beyond twenty. And it's after they've said we're going in, like we're we're getting into AI. It's only then that Palantir's share price has gone up to to like twenty five where it is now. And with that being said, you know, we've said a lot of the good stuff and now it's like the now let's also talk about the potential downsides. Some of the potential concerns may include the possibility of legal contingencies about the privacy and the ownership of those data. Since Palantir deals with sensitive information, it may also face a lot of scrutiny and legal challenges, which could adversely affect its operations, reputation, and the bottom line. Any negative development in this area can significantly impact the investor's sentiment and a company's financial well-being and even its going concern. So, Palantir also relies on the public sector for contracts. Um, this is also something that may not sit well with uh, many. So, the government contracts can be lucrative for sure. They also come with a degree of uncertainty because every few years, you know, they got to go back through the, the same hoops and hopefully to see the contracts being renewed. Um, they could be subject 
to political and budgetary considerations. If the government agencies decide to cut back on spending or shift the, their needs and priorities, or to say that, you know what, it, you're like, Palantir has been there for a few years, why can't we try another company? You know what I mean? Like, these are the little things that will eventually start to scratch people's mind. Um, it could have a detrimental on Plunteer's revenue and growth prospects, for sure. But more importantly, it can also have a very negative impact on uh, people's expectation of Plunteer. Because a lot of people do assume that, like, actually, Plunteer is hand in hand with the government agencies. So whenever those big agencies want to spend money, well, there's Palantir, right? If that assumption stops being true, then I think that the market cap may also uh, be different compared to where, what it is now. So there's also um, another potential downside, which is the possibility of the shift of the narrative. Because, and in fact, Palantir is in two narratives, one in AI, the other one in big data. The big data's risk we've talked about is basically to say, okay, if investing into a privatized uh, big brother doesn't seem to raise a lot of eyebrows, is it going to raise some eyebrows a few years from, from now? You know, is there going to be a moment where people are going to look back and be like, you know what, it's pretty dumb, this idea that I am investing into my own surveillance, you know, you know what I mean? So that is one of the problems that we may have. And the other problem is the fact that so much of Palantir's value um, is caused by its participation into the AI um, party, okay? Is that everybody wants to pretend that they, they do AI so that this thing becomes popular. Now, to be fair, Palantir definitely has what it, what it needs in order to, you know, showcase that, yes, they can develop AI and whatnot, but is that really in their interest? Like, have we seen anybody making a lot of dough from the operations of the AI? Fortunately, we don't have to answer that question right now, but what if, um, like, 24 months from now, people change their, their shift, one, like, people shift their, their attention once again? Right, their focus is now on like, I don't know, blockchain gaming. Well, whatever. I'm I'm making things up. Okay, so what if another topic becomes trending in the markets? You see what I'm saying? Like a few years ago, it used to be fintech, it used to be lifestyle, and then it was EV. So there's nothing that says that AI is going to be like this permanently prosperous uh, theme forever. You know, so th this is like another problem if you want to buy into Palantir because it is now being sold at a premium. But is this premium always going to stay here and more importantly, grow? That is a whole different story. And that is also why yeah, going in, you would have to believe in the Palantir. Like from a fundamental level, you have to believe in the Palantir um, the the sectors of AI, uh, like the development of AI, the the relevance of big data analytics, um, and the fact that so right now the global markets are facing a complex interplay of factors that have the potential to significantly influence the equities worldwide. In this speculative analysis. I believe that the consequences of the global inflation, surging commodity prices, and decline quantitative easing, as well as the rise of inflation rates or interest rates, plus the geopolitical instabilities, are going to play a significant part. The increasing inflation rate has been putting pressures across the globe, threatening the purchasing power, raising the input costs, and impacting corporate profitability. Companies operating internationally may face challenges in managing rising production costs and also to sustain profit margins. Those dynamics could trigger market volatility as investors adjust their risk-return expectations. 
the upward trajectory of commodity prices, including energy, metals, agricultural products, have been having far-reaching implications for various sectors of the global equities market. The companies heavily dependent on these commodities may experience squeezed profit margins, potentially affecting stock valuations and investor sentiment. The reduction or the end of QE's quantitative easing measures by the central banks worldwide may have resulted in reduced market liquidity. So this in turn could lead to higher borrowing costs for companies seeking capital, which may also discourage investment activities or will. The elevated market volatility plus the reduced investors' appetite may also continue to occur. Now, the central banks around the world are tackling this delicate situation of balancing the inflation rates with the economic stability and, if possible, growth. Central banks opted for aggressive interest rate hikes to combat inflation. Borrowing costs for companies have been rising, which has also slowed down business activities and also fueling the market's volatility in terms of the equity prices. Now, ongoing geopolitical tensions, including trade disputes, political uncertainties, and social unrest, will inject an additional element of volatility into the global markets. Investors may adopt a cautious approach, shifting towards safer assets, impacting the equities. Additionally, the escalating conflicts may disrupt supply chains, negatively impacting the performance of international companies. Given the interconnectedness of global markets, the aforementioned factors have reverberating effects on the U.S. equities market. Companies with significant exposure to international market may face a lot of headwinds resulting from the economic slowdowns, disrupting the supply chains and the currency fluctuations. But nevertheless, the U.S. market is known for its resilience and the diverse sectors may attract investors seeking safe havens. So really, the current landscape is characterized by global inflation, surging commodity prices, surging commodity prices, reduced quantitative easing, rising central bank inflation rates, geopolitical instabilities, and also ongoing lack of certainty regarding growth. While the U.S. market may exhibit relative strength due to the safe haven status, it's going to remain interconnected with the global economic landscape. For long-term investors, these conditions may offer opportunities to identify undervalued companies with strong fundamentals and international diversification. That being said, short-term trades should be approached with caution because of the increased volatility and uncertainty. And also, we should be careful when assessing individual companies, sectors, or regions. So, with that being said, considering the current market dynamics and Palantir's own performance, buying Palantir shares can be a prudent long-term investment decision for those seeking exposure in the tech sector. Um, Palantir has shown its resilience even in bearish market conditions, indicating its stability and the potential as a significant player in the field. It has shown its ability to adapt and to capitalize on new market trends, which is really crucial in a rapidly evolving landscape and in a volatile you know, um, landscape that um, NASDAQ has. It's co- like its capacity to seize opportunities does suggest that it may continue to thrive and generate value for investors over the long run. Another factor to consider as Palantir's self-sufficiency, which reduces the likelihood of significant dilution in the future. And this financial stability really provides a level of reassurance for the investors, indicating that the company is very well positioned to weather any sort of significant market fluctuations. Because after all, if you think about it, the company went from 35 initially to like 8 or 7 or even 6, if I recall correctly, and now bounced back to like 25. 
So it has seen some some great volatilities in its existence. So you know, we, we I would say that it has what it's what is needed um, to survive and to thrive into extreme market conditions. Now, we got to be, of course, cautious and patient. And given the potential for market volatilities, I would say that gradually build it up um, is the best decision to, to go with. And the slow and steady approach would help us to mitigate any sort of significant price dips, um, you know, over a short period of time. And so that you can be able to even capitalize on some of those uh, market pullbacks or nosedives. Okay. And if you want to buy plenty, because we've talked about like the reasons why to buy, but also for whom is this kind of stock is for. Um, Palantir is for people who believe that big data is here to stay, that Palantir will be able to continue to grow its operations, and that the current narrative, not about the AI, but about the big data, will likely not change significantly. That they can just grow under the radar like this. And also, um, we're talking about the people who have a certain degree of optimism about like towards the future. So if you believe that you're one of those types of investors, then yes, definitely slowly building up a position of, of like Palantir is a good way to go.